first memory that came to mind was mud. It rained nearly every week for months and wherever you went there was mud. And apart from that, there was the anxiety of people who were worried about the future of their homes, worried about their families, worried about their places of work. Uh, but also the incredible cooperation of people getting together, working out what to do and helping each other. I was a teacher at the Curlwa School. I lived in a flat in Wentworth, which I shared with two, two or three other teachers at the time. Um, I used to go out to the school by bus. Sometimes I rode my bike when the weather was fine. People knew quite early that there was a big river coming down, but it took a while before people became aware of just how bad it was going to be. I read my husband's diary and he said that he went into town and there were, all of a sudden there were tractors moving around, all around the town. So that's, I suppose that was one of the early signs that people were starting to do things. Pat would have been a year or two older than me, I reckon. But so she was a young woman. She was a young woman who, whose home was at Pomona, where she lived on a citrus block with her family. Since leaving school, she worked in the accountancy office of Crang and Sons in Wentworth. And photography from an early age became her hobby and her main interest so that she became quite an expert photographer. She did her own printing and developing at home, in her bedroom, which was turned into a dark room. And she, well, she was a skilled, a skilled photographer. She would have read books. She subscribed to magazines, so she, she learned as much as she could about photography. Yes, she was such, such a dedicated photographer that whenever she took a reel of film, she would record um, how the camera was set and what the photographs were, the people in them, sometimes the people in them, 
and the place that they were taken. People started to realise, they started to look at the, the river banks, they saw the water, those people who lived on the river, they would have seen the river coming into their back gardens because quite a lot of houses fronted onto the, both the Darling and down around the corner to, towards the lock and people would have seen the water coming up. People would put sticks in, that's how far it is, and then all of a sudden it would be a big jump. And people would see that there was a big rise, and then people started to get worried. They were on edge, they very much, they really were on edge, yes, very anxious. And, uh, and, and concerned because they, they felt that it was quite possible that their houses would get flooded. They never did, but except for that one. Um, which I think they stopped trying to hold because of its position. It was too just, it was a very anxious time for people in Wentworth, it really was. Um, people started to think about building levee banks. People started to fill sandbags. But I suppose the first things that people did was to secure their homes and their furniture. They put the furniture up on sweat boxes. because people did work very hard, people were rostered, and there were signals, you know, signals, whistles or something or other, that if there was a break somewhere, particularly at night, there would be a signal and people could go and help to um, strengthen the, the levee bank. So there were sort of patrols out watching the levee bank as the levee bank was built and topped up and topped up and topped up a bit more. Um, some, of, some of the women established a kitchen in the Shire Hall where they were preparing food that could be taken out to men who were working all night. Uh, after the, the soldiers were there, they, I think they used to feed the soldiers there too. The, but some of the soldiers stayed in, some of the army personnel. A lot of them were national servicemen. 
and even a couple of local boys. There's a story in the book there of a boy who grew up in Mervine and he was up back at Pakapanyala or somewhere and he said, can I go too because that's where I live, I know what the place is like. really was a constant battle and the value of the Fergies was they were a small tractor that could go on the top top of the levee banks. Anything bigger or more cumbersome could be more nuisance than it was worth but um, Fergies with scoops on the back that could pick up dirt apart from you know because it was often it was dirt that was put on the levee banks they were just topped up with sandbags or brakes would have been filled with sandbags. The school did keep on going. Quite a few of the children had been evacuated other to, to relatives away from the area. Uh, but there were always a few children there and the school stayed open all the time. Well, they kept the hospital open, that was a mighty effort. You see, that was all levy, bank, levy banks all the way around. And there was still access, you still could get into the town. But Pomona was isolated for several months. Well, my father-in-law borrowed a, an, an ex-army barge. And with that, he would go to town, loading it up with the oranges that were picked on the block because it was winter and the navels were, were ripe and needed to be sent to market. And they were picked in dump boxes, not in bins which they were handled and they loaded the barges up with the boxes of oranges and they, the fruit was unloaded and uh, they would go shopping. They would probably have shopping lists for people on Pomona and take out food and other supplies, yeah. fuel, whatever. Occasionally people from Pomona might hitch a ride to town if they there was room on the boat and I think there were a couple of other people from Pomona who had boats that would go to and fro. Likewise when the army ducks were there.
river went down slowly, not very fast. Time of great relief and rejoicing. But they still had the mess to clean up. All that mud and all that, um, you know, furniture that had to go back home and the children that had to be retrieved. And the biggest problem was that there was a high river in the Murray at the same time, so the Darling, could, Darling River couldn't get away because there was a double whammy, all the water there, heading down for South Australia where they suffered quite a bit. But I mean, the determination that the levee banks had to be maintained, strengthened, rebuilt, made higher. <laughs> and all those things did happen in due course. <laughs>